Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd. Ayyul Ahbab, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and bless you and forgive us and forgive you. An important lesson can be derived from the ahadith or lessons can be derived from the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa salam. And one of the lessons that we can derive from a hadith that we're about to take a look at is the importance of never giving up and despairing on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realizing that your deeds alone, that even when you're doing righteous deeds, that ultimately you still depend upon the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, in order to accept your good deeds. And Ayyul Ahbab, in order to have our deeds accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are two conditions that must be met. Ikhlas is number one, with thabat or mutabat is the second one. Ikhlas ayyul ahbab meaning that you do the deed sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And mutaba is that you follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that good deed. So for example, the person who prays, they pray only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't pray to the awliya, they don't pray to the saints, they don't pray to Abdullah Harari, they don't pray to the Shia. They don't pray to the Shias, uh, to Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They don't worship anything except Allah. So it's sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in addition to that, the way in which they pray, the manners of prayer, the, the statements and the actions and all of the aspects of the prayer are from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from his sunnah, how he prayed. He prayed two rakat units for uh, fajr, for the early morning prayer. And he prayed four for dhuhr. And he prayed four for asr. And he prayed three for maghrib. And he prayed four for isha. All of these are in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if you miss one of those aspects, then you've missed a great part of your, your deed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept it. Because either you fail to meet the sunnah, not just the sunnah of what, what is recommended, but meaning the sunnah, the uh, obligatory, the sunnah that makes it sahih, that makes it a sound action, a sound act of ibadah or worship, or that you miss sincerity to Allah. So you could have prayed those four units of prayer, but yet you prayed it to Abdul Qadr Jailani. Or you prayed it to some saint or you prayed it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or whoever or whatever you prayed it to. But in fact it has it can only be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you need both of those conditions, Ayyul Ahbab. And in regards to the topic at hand that we need the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our deeds. Listen to this hadith of Abi Huraira. An Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Qaribu wa saddidu wa a'lamu annahu lan yanju ahadun minkum bi'amalihi. Qalu, wala anta ya Rasulullah? Qal, wala ana illa an yatagammadini, yatagammadini Allah bi rahmatin minhu wa fadl. Ruahu Muslim. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, follow the right path of faith strictly and be steadfast and keep in mind that none of you can achieve salvation through his good actions. Someone asked, not even you, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi said, not even me unless Allah grants me his mercy and grace. And this is collected in Muslim, Sahih Muslim. Ayyul Ahbab, this hadith tells us that although the importance of faith of Iman and its practice is beyond any shadow of a doubt, 
because this is the only way to attain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favors and blessings. That no one should entirely depend upon the practice alone because any shortcoming in their practice can ruin, uh, it, it could potentially ruin that good deed. So it is therefore essential that we also pray that our good deeds are accepted by Allah and that He grants us His infinite mercy and sincerity because even the greatest noble deed is invalid without it. Meaning that if you do not have sincerity to Allah Azza wa Jal, that your deed will be invalid because it will compri be comprised of shirk instead of ibadah, instead of ta'atillah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Allahumma anni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatika wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam